Hi, my name is Megan Lobin and I am the Education Manager at the Meadows Center for Water and the Environment. We are one of Texas State's five research centers. What we are going to do today is demonstrate our Enviroscape that we use here as our educational programming. We use our Enviroscape to show how different forms of pollution can move through an environment. There are several key terms that we are going to go over before we begin this demonstration. What is a water body? A water body is any river, lake, stream, ocean, pond, or basin. Water bodies receive runoff water from a watershed. On our Enviroscape, the blue is going to represent our water bodies. So we're going to have rivers and streams flowing into our lake. What is a watershed? A watershed is a region or area that may contain several rivers, streams, lakes that drain into a particular watercourse or body of water. A watershed drains rainfall and melting snow into the nearest water body that lies at the lowest point of the watershed. The whole entire Enviroscape is going to represent our watershed. So everything you see here is going to flow down into our rivers, creeks, streams, and lake. When you hear the word pollution, what do you think? Our demonstration is going to look at two forms of pollution, point source pollution and non-point source pollution. Point source pollution is a discharge into water bodies from specific identifiable points or pipes, such as industrial plants, sewage treatment plants, and storm water drains. Non-point source pollution, also known as NPS, is a pollution that cannot be traced to a specific origin or starting point but seems to flow from many different sources. NPS pollutions are generally carried off the land by stormwater or melting snow, known as runoff. The commonly used categories for non-point source pollution are agriculture, forestry, urban areas, mining, construction, dams, and channels. Situation 1. Roger doesn't take care of his car. His car leaks oil and other liquids everywhere he drives it. The oil leaks all over the streets. Situation 2. Clay has two loads of dirt dumped at the work site. He doesn't block the surrounding storm drains to keep the dirt from running down the drains and into the nearby creek. Situation 3. Peggy the painter just finished a job painting the gym floor at the middle school. Because she is in a hurry to get to her next job, she forgets to finish loading her truck and leaves a bucket of paint and a can of paint thinner on the curb. Later, some kids find Peggy's paint products and dump them in the street. Situation 4. The homeowners in the neighborhood are competing for the greenest and prettiest lawn. Mike decides to spread plant food, aka fertilizer, but he doesn't read the instructions and puts out too much plant food in his yard. Situation 5. Farmer Fred's cattle feedlot is located near the creek. Because he doesn't use a device to keep the rain runoff from entering into the creek, cow manure floats into the creek from the road. Situation 6. The industrial plant produces waste. When they are releasing that waste, they are releasing pollutants into the water body. That night, a huge rainstorm moves through.
which areas do you think were point source pollution? And which areas were the non-point source pollution? The only one that was a point source is our paper factory. It directly releases contaminants containing pollution into the water system. Everything else demonstrated today was non-point source pollution. The school, the construction site, the fertilizer, and the oil leaking from the car, as well as the cow manure. Which types of pollution seem to have the most impact on the river, the land, and the Gulf of Mexico? Non-point source pollution. What do you think that you can do at home to help eliminate non-point source pollution? Prevent oil leaks from vehicles through regular maintenance. Place manure in manure containment structures. Fences for construction sites. How would these changes affect organisms living in the water? Thank you so much for watching this demonstration. Now more than ever, Spring Lake Education Program needs your support. Please think about purchasing an annual pass or gift certificates. You can also donate directly to our program.